I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. We wanted to follow up really quickly on our battery situation. If you missed last week's video, we'll put a link in the cards up here for you to jump back and get the full scoop on what happened. So we lost two batteries, which means we lost just over 10 kilowatts of power storage capability. And that sucks. But we needed to figure out what to do with the batteries. So we got a lot of comments from you guys about the ability to break them down and put them back together and re refurbish the batteries. Quite frankly, I'm just not comfortable doing that. So we felt the most responsible thing to do would be to recycle them. So we called around, found some place locally that we could take them and actually recycle them properly. So that's exactly what we did. Now, for this boat, that means we went from 14 modules down to 12. Kind of sucks. But it's still more than what we had on the last boat. So before we can get into this epic power series, we actually need to get this boat hauled out because she needs to get a mast and be a proper sailboat. She needs to get a logo and she needs to get a grounding plate put on for our lightning protection, which is also super cool. Now, the mast has been in the boat yard for I don't know, since April, what is that, like 10 months or something crazy like that? I don't even know, a long time. But it came in naked from Gainesville. So we need to get everything put on her. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Spreaders, standing rigging, all the lights, the radar, lighting protection. We have a lot of work to do. So let's head on over to the boat yard where we can get this boat ready so that she can be hauled out soon. Explain to me what you just did because I didn't have the camera going because I only have Stop minutes. talking. So there's three points that the mast is sitting on. We've got one sawhorse in the middle and two kind of in oh, about 10 feet from either end. So in an effort not to have to pick up the entire mast to get the cart underneath, we just removed one sawhorse, which allowed the mast to tilt down. And then if you look at the other side, now it's easily cleared. And I'll just lift up a little bit. Kim, you can roll that in. I don't even think you need to lift up. Yeah, maybe just a little. a little. Okay, she's in. Further? Further? Well, yeah. now, okay. All right, <clears throat> so now let's go do the other side and we're gonna have to puff this one up for real. Okay, so there's a T-slot in the side of this boomerang thing that goes into the mast right here. So this slides in and then there's this screw or this bolt with this lock nut that basically holds the T-track aligned with the actual spreader arm. And then as we slide that all the way in, we're gonna be able to tighten this down, which will pull this T-slot against the extrusion and hold the actual spreader arm in place. And then we're gonna drill through the spreader arm bracket and this bolt will go all the way through and we'll have some lock nuts on the other side holding it in place and that's what will keep the, the spreader arms lined up to this mast here and they're cut to follow this shape and then we'll be able to put the wires in from the sides to be able to have the inside diamonds hold the mast um, spreader arms in place and that's it now we're gonna put the other side on and tighten it all up all right, so the, on the inside diamonds, um, there's two small cables that are this size. I think it's 10 mil. And then there's two larger ones that I think are 12 that go on the outside. And near as I can tell, um, just as I'm setting everything up, these guys stabilize and isolate the mass to be straight, left to right. And the two larger shrouds or diamonds um, off of the mass that attach 
much higher and much lower on the mast. Um, those are what put the rake in the back of the mast to create that, that backward arching bend. So to install these guys and anything with this type of a fitting is you actually feed it through like so. It'll feed all the way around. And when it comes in, this right here will seat on the inside of that. And that is what will retain and hold the cable. Okay. So I'm gonna unwrap this, get it fed through and we'll attach our first one. Although this is stainless to stainless, I'm still gonna put an anti-corrosion inhibitor on the inside. Do you put like Loctite or anything like that on there? Does the Tough Gel act like Loctite also? Tough Gel will do just fine as an anti, well it's an anti-seize, and I'm gonna torque it down so we'll get nice tension on it, but I don't think I wanna put Loctite in there. All right, Kim, you wanna hold this pin over here on the tip of the spreader? Okay, so we've got this guy loosened all the way up, and then I want the turnbuckle bolts to be even on both sides, so as I tighten it, there's just an even amount of cabling through there. Okay, all right. Okay, now that we have the diamonds installed and the spreader arms installed, we can go ahead and start drilling holes. <laughs> One of my favorite things ever, <laughs> but it's necessary, so this is for a good reason. We have our scan strut mount, which is what our radar is going to mount to that we actually need to attach to the mast. So we've lined it up here on the flat part of the front of the mast and marked it with holes and now we're going to get out our drill and we're gonna actually drill into the aluminum so that we can use the rivet gun, the new rivet tool and rivet this bad boy to the mast. So let's do it. All right, so before I drill, I'm gonna actually use a center punch to be able to, um, cause the mast is curved and I wanna make sure that drill bit doesn't walk around when I um, start drilling in. So. I use my center punch, I get to the center of this hole that I mark, and then I use my hammer. I know not a lot of you have seen a left-handed hammer before, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> and I'll do a punch on each of these. Now I can't, there's three, there's three rivets that go in, but my pencil's not long enough, so I'm basically gonna rivet the entire bracket on, and then the last four remaining holes, I'll actually use the hole in the bracket as the guide, and I'll drill through that, and then I'll put a rivet in there. So. I will demonstrate again how to use a left-handed hammer. You're so adept with that left-handed hammer. <laughs> Growing up left-handed, you have to make adjustments in life. <laughs> uh, can you even see those? I can't even tell. I can, I think. No, Oops. me, the camera. And for those of you asking where my safety glasses are, they're right here. These are my safety squints. Good squints. Ta-da! Fancy. Holes. Yay, holes. Now, if I was using a stainless rivet, I'd actually put Tef gel on the outside of the rivet, but I'm not. I'm using aluminum rivet, so I don't need to do that. But I will show you my new left-handed rivet gun. It is not left-handed. It's for anyone to use. If you're left-handed. <laughs> we don't discriminate. You just need to use your left hand. <laughs> no, you don't. All right, to line these up, I like to take and just put several rivets in the holes. It's upside down. <laughs> You'd think so. Some of these left-handed people get things backwards. Oh, please. By lining up all the holes first, <laughs> one, you make sure you drilled them right, and two, it'll keep it from shifting around on you. Mm -hmm. 
You ready? I'm ready. See? Left hand. Ta-da! I'm gonna play. You wanna do it? I do. In case anybody's watching, she's using her right hand. Because I'm right-handed. Wait, do I have to do anything special to this? I just put it on here like this? Yeah? Pull the trigger. Well, this is scary. <laughs> you broke it. <gasps> Uh-oh. <laughs> there you go. Sweet. I don't think you can get in there, can you? Yeah, I can. Tell me I can't. Look at that. I am woman, hear me roar. Arr. This side over here? Yeah. yeah. Shablam. Do you want me to try the other side? Sure. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Bam. Boom, not, chicken not soup. Not sponsored, but we should be. We have lots of scan stuff, stuff coming. And Milwaukee, not sponsored, but we should be. That's right. Left-handed. <laughs> it's not left-handed. We will, however, put the description for this item down below because if you do have to do any riveting to anything on your boat, or even at home if you have rivets that you have to do, this is very easy to use, obviously, because this chick did it. And it's gonna go along with all the other M12 items that you might already have, so. <laughs> Especially when you have to do 500 rivets. Correct. Still not sponsored, but we should be. What in the hell are you doing? So what ha happened was <laughs> is that we fed all these wires. Look at all these wires. It's a big bundle of wires. And you can see in there, it barely fits in that one inch conduit. Well, this is our air transducer. And the air transducer, I didn't run through the masthead before I ran it in there and now I can't get the wire out without it having to pull all these wires out. And it took us hours to get all these wires in. So in the effort of expediency, I'm just gonna open up this hole in the masthead where all these wires are intended to come through so this head fits through there. So I don't have to cut this wire and splice it together. I'd much prefer just to open up this non-structural part of the plate than to cut through the wire and have a splice 78 feet in the air. So that's what I'm doing. My die grinder and my safety squints. Um, this is our steaming light and our deck light that the mask company was polite enough to put two wires in here. There's three conductors in each wire, so technically you could put two lights on each post, but this is all I have. And I don't, I don't know if I like that option. Can so, you use one of those wires for a haler or is that too low for a haler? You might be able to use it, but we need to buy a haler because we don't, our, our VHF doesn't have a haler function in it, so we have to buy something else. But I don't know if this is going to be the, do you like this, Kim? It's okay. It just doesn't seem like it would be bright enough because it's so little. I don't yeah. know. Size doesn't always matter, I guess. But. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, That's what she mm. said. I mean, it looks good on the mast. What do you think, Sid? Where Sid's gone? Yeah, I think that'll work. Now that you have all of your tools, what are you doing? <laughs> now that I've got all of my tools, finally, I am putting this all together. What's this? Our mast and steaming light, masthead and steaming light. Our masthead steaming light <laughs> and the deck light. So I now have crimps on one side. Oh, this is not the side with crimps. I'm coming. This is All right. Waiting. I'm just going to be here. Waiting. Waiting. And I like to put chafe, chafe guards and protecting protectant on everything. So. Feed these through. 
And this is a heat shrink that'll close in the ends. It'll all make perfect sense here in just a minute. This is my Chinese finger puzzle. This stuff is really cool because it's, it's a great chafe guard. The problem is the end frays out. So that's what I'm gonna be using the heat shrink for. All right. I think this is gonna be super boring for everybody. We'll fast forward it. I'm gonna take and smash this down and put heat shrink over the end of it. And this will glue and encapsulate both sides. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in this light. A fancy new camera. Can you see the glue that's coming out of the end of that? And it's shiny? Maybe. Yep. You can see the glue on this side. And it's really durable, but you got to let it cool because it is hot, hot when it shrinks down. See, doesn't that look nice? So pretty. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to drill holes for the rivets that go through. Now this is Kim's favorite thing, drilling holes in her boat. You have to be very, very careful where you drill holes because there are conduits that run on the four corners of the mast. So the mast is kind of an oval with squared off ends and um, there is a T-track that a split piece of conduit snaps onto and it runs the full length, or in this case, a partial length, um, up the mast. And that allows you to feed wires and keep them protected and separate from all of the halyards and the lines that are running up and down the mast. But when you drill through, if you drill in the wrong spot, you drill right through the conduit and of course, through all your wires. And we don't wanna make that happen. So before I did this, I walked over and I wrapped this around the front of the mast, which is gonna sit like so. And when I folded it like this, I looked inside to see where that conduit runs. And this conduit actually stops right about here where the tip of my finger is. So I'm just gonna miss that conduit when I drill through. Um, <coughs> I held it as long as Kim's I could. gonna die. <laughs> so I'm just gonna miss that conduit um, when I drill through for the rivet. All right, so there we go, straight in. Originally this mast was set up for a steaming light and a deck light. We bought a two in one, so we have an extra hole in the mast if we're gonna put anything else on the boat or another piece of hardware up on the mast. I don't know what that would be, but um, in case we want to. All right, so I'm using a small eighth inch rivet. <laughs> and there's a train coming, so hang on a second. So if you look here, this, this rivet fits in the hole, but it's, it can almost, will pull through. So I'm gonna use one of these fancy washers that you can get for rivets and now it completely covers the hole just like so and we should get a good bite That's it. Ta da! Look how, look how fancy that is and fast. 
Ty approved. Join us next week when we take the boat out of the canal for the first time in almost a year and head to haul out. Sid's at the helm and makes one teeny tiny mistake.